What's up, y'all? I got a banger from men only. Let's get straight into it. I see a lot of videos on this app of women who are in their 30s and single saying they're the only person that's single in their friend group. Like all their friends are partnered, they're having kids, they're settling down, yada yada. For me, it's the opposite. I'm 30 and I've been invited to like maybe two friend weddings and none of my friends are settling down. None this of is because single women keep women single. Of course you're not going to weddings because you're doing all the single girl things. Come on now. My friends are even in relationships. So I feel I bring a very unique perspective to the conversation on men and like dating in your 30s because not only am I- A unique perspective? You mean like every other modern woman? <laughs> Come on, stop it. I, 30 and single, a lot of my friends are 30 and single and they live across the country. So this isn't just like, oh, I'm in San Diego. It's the San Diego guys. No, this is literally from East Coast to West Coast. And you can tell me I'm biased, but literally all my friends are hot, bad bitches who are independent and have really solid careers. So like, in my mind, these are people that should have a boyfriend. Like, you- Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Everybody's always hot. It's like- that's all they bring to the table is their appearance. That's why I always say, dude, your appearance is what gets you a ticket to the dance, but your personality is what gets you a date afterwards. Appearance is just like one criteria. We break it down into three things. Appearance is one third, your character is one third, and your personality. Appearance, appearance gets our attention, your personality keeps our attention, and your character is what makes us fall in love with you. Ladies, if you're lacking two of the three, no wonder you're not with a man. No wonder you're single. It's a no brainer want to date them but literally nothing is working out for any of my friends if it were just me i would think okay i'm the problem and it's you are the problem well first of all and then it's always why is it chat it's always the nose ring <laughs> it's always it's always the one here the hoop or the little septum bull nose it's always like a you can just like see it from a mile away but the fact that this is my friends that are across the country that are having this issue it's the men like it's literally it Gotta speaks be. to the quality of men it, it's just always so disappointing and listen i'm not saying there's not good men there are but the ones that are they get scooped up because there's like 10 of them there's like 10 good ones so what does that say about you if all the good men are getting scooped up does that mean you're not a good woman i don't know i'm just saying don't shoot the messenger here but you got to look at the common denominator and it's you if you're not happy with the results, maybe you should go look in the mirror. This is why I say life is a mirror, not a window, man. And 5,000 terrible ones. I'm waiting for the day that someone proves me wrong. I really am. I Keep please, waiting. I please, a man, please, anyone, prove me wrong. You know, it's crazy how so- I'm sure she's been approached by a lot of men, too. And usually with the nose ring, usually comes a little bit of trauma. Got tattoos, piercings everywhere. You're looking for outside validation, somebody to go, oh my god, that is such a cute little nose ring. For me, if I see the nose ring, I know to run. She's a runner, she's a track star. I know, I know what the nose ring means. I know what the tattoos mean. I know to stay away. I know to absolutely stay away. But the funny thing is, is that these women never want to look in the mirror and go, hmm, maybe it's me. No, it's got to be the men. It's got to be the men, got to be the men. I just don't see how failed relationship after failed relationship and then you're hanging out with only single girls you're wondering why you can't find a man because you're not hanging out with girls that are in relationships it's the amoeba effect you're only as successful as the top five people you spend the most time with if you're spending your time with a bunch of single women and then you're mad that you're single as well are you stupid are you serious you're spending time with single women no wonder you're single it's a it's like a no-brainer for us men or chat chat am i way out of line with that with that take I feel like that's very just that's just logic. I honestly want to know if boys are okay. Because I just ended Big back, big back. Lord have mercy. The situation with a guy, beautiful person, but I've learned just a scared boy and that's okay. But I ended it because we've been talking for a while and spending a lot of time together recently. So I instigated the conversation of like, what are we doing? Because I told you, if you do these things, I will fall for you. And then you did these things and surprise, surprise, I'm falling for you. Wait, 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 wait. Stupid. You told him what he needed to do for you to fall for him. And then you're surprised that he did it. Are you, why would you, why would you tell somebody? Don't tell him if, unless you want him to know. But wait, there's more. And I don't want to waste my time or do that one-sided. And I was hit with the classic response of, 
oh, I think I misread the situation because I thought we were just hanging out and getting to know each other. I love spending time with you, but I need to build a friendship before I jump into anything. Like anything that we were doing was friendship focused. But regardless, the usual. And so I said, I hear you saying that you don't want what I want and that you're not ready and that's okay. But rather than assist you in hurting my feelings, I think it's kinder to both of us for yeah. me to listen to what you're saying and let you figure that out on your own. And his response to me ending the situation shit then was a part of me feels like it's someone else as if the reason that I've ended the situation ship is because I'm pursuing something on the side with someone else. <laughs> I'm just like, what? Like, sir, I just bore my soul to you and told you that I'm falling for you. And explained to you that the way that my heart works is that if I'm building a connection with someone who I think is worth it, I subconsciously block myself off from other opportunities with other people because I don't have endless capacity or desire to build connection. No, 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 no. <laughs> you definitely don't have endless capacity. <laughs> Can't imagine a woman looking like this has a ton of just options. Maybe she does. I don't know. But I, it's so hard to feel bad for these women because you're getting rejected. Us as men, we get rejected all the time from the ages of 12 to 28. I've been rejected my entire life by women. And you want us to come in here and be like, you know what? We feel bad for you, honey. He should fall for you. This is a classic case right here of a woman shooting out of her freaking league. She's shooting out of her league. This guy is way out of her league. And that's why she told him, hey, you do X, Y, Z, I'll fall for you. What man in his right mind, if a girl said, hey, do these three things and I'll be obsessed with you, why wouldn't you yeah. do it? Those would be the first three things I would do. Oh, I got to do this, that, and the third for you to fall for me? I'm going to do it because I want you obsessed with me. That was my thing in college. I wanted to get girls obsessed with, obsessed with me as fast as possible, and then I left. And then I disconnected completely. Nowadays, we call that love bombing. But back in the day, I just called it obsession. I wanted them to be obsessed so that way they craved my validation because if you can prey on a girl's insecurities, then she will love you. It's awful. It's not moral. It's not ethical. But us as men, we have to do things that get results. We don't always have to do the things that are nice. ...with numerous people, especially when I think the one that I'm currently building is with a good person that I could see something with. Baby girl, you're just beating the cheeks. How can women not see this? Calling you at 2 a.m.? Hitting you up at 11 p.m. Sup. You know, like, ladies, if he's hitting you with the one-line text at a 12, 8, 12 a.m., 1 a.m., 2 a.m., <laughs> he's in it for the Chucky Cheekage, okay? He's not in it because he wants you to want you to be wifey. <laughs> Come on, bro. And his response to that was, oh, that didn't even occur to me. To be honest, I don't want to lie to you. Like, I've been on, like, been going on dates. Oh, he's going on a tear. And so... He's dating other people, and I'm the sad simp bitch who's like, please love me and let me love you. But then you flip the switch on me and say that you think the reason I ended things is because of someone else. Gaslighting 101. That, hey, be beautifully played by him. Beautifully played. Because it's always good to gaslight her. You're probably seeing other people even though he's seeing other people. Beautifully played. <laughs> no, you're worse. Boys are out here acting all damaged by women when y'all are just blocking your own blessings and scaring yourselves out of... You think he's blocking a blessing? <laughs> I don't know. She looks like the one she'd be blocking something. Shots fired! <laughs> the cowboys needed a linebacker! potentials with people who just want to love you it doesn't make any sense you know it's crazy i mean it makes total sense actually you're shooting out of your league this guy is clearly not on par with you but you thought just because he was getting in the guts and realigning some spinach <laughs> that y'all were compatible this is why i always say if he's good enough for you he's good enough for a few put it on a freaking t-shirt Ladies, if he's meeting all the criteria for you to let him crush, more than likely there's another girl out there that's like, ah, he's ticking all the boxes for me too. A lot of these women think they're so special. You're not unique. 
you're just one of the pack. So it's so crazy to me. I am truly at a loss right now. I don't even have the proper words to describe all of the emotions that I'm feeling right now. I have absolutely had then, it. With then just don't talk. Just don't talk. But I doubt, I doubt you do that. Men. It's like literally no matter whether I intentionally date or I meet someone in the wild, it doesn't matter how it plays out. I always get hurt in the end. Always. Tell me why I went on the best first date ever a few days ago. Before the date, this guy was future planning with me already. On the date, he mentioned a second date. After the date, he texted me and told me that I was good vibes and then haven't heard from him since Sunday night. Then to make that worse, my ex situation should text me today. Hey gorgeous, how are you doing? And you know what's the worst thing of all? The more this happens, the more it reinforces to me that maybe I'm not worthy of a relationship and maybe all I am. Maybe you aren't. And that's the bottom line. And that's okay. Not everybody's ready for a relationship. You have to do the work first. You have to fall in love with yourself before you fall in love with anybody else. And a lot of people, this is men and women, are running amok, seeking validation from other people to make them feel loved. I want to love me. So-and-so will love me so I feel loved. No. Outside validation doesn't make you feel good internally. It's self-esteem. It's the way you feel about yourself. You need to work on yourself first. I'm good enough for is a situationship. Because if I'm being honest, my ex-situationship is the only consistent man in my life. I can't get situationships to commit to me. I can't even get guys who claim they want commitment to commit to me. And, and I you want to know why that is, ladies? You want to know why that is? It's because you're giving him every privilege as a girlfriend without the title. You're giving him kooka. You're letting him beat up the Chuck E. Cheekage. He's in there like swimwear. You're probably cooking for him. You're probably going out on dates with him, dressing up. You're probably meeting his friends, maybe meeting his family, going to events, spending quality time with him. Y'all are at the house. You're rubbing his feet. He's getting every privilege from you a girlfriend would give. Why would he put you in a relationship? You're already giving him everything. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. So I can't blame men because men are conquerors. We take advantage of things. And so a guy's going to come in and get all these privileges. He's like, yeah, I'm going to take, take advantage of this. I'm not going to wife you up. I'm not going to put a claim or a title on this. You never made me, so why would I do it now? So ladies, you have to you have to almost like motivate a man to want to date you and be monogamous with you. There's got to be an incentive. Men aren't just going to do it most of the time because they want to. And more than likely, if you're a situationship, you're one of a few. He's got a couple other flavors. He's got his Baskin Robbins, his 31 floating around there. He's not just bucking you. He's probably bucking a few. I know. I know everyone always says, oh, it's not you. It's a reflection of them. I have been consistently dealing with this for years okay the last time i got absolutely heartbroken was in september and i told myself i was like nope this is never gonna happen again what do you know the next guy i kind of start getting interested in ghosts me mm. so at this point it's like okay either there is a really big me problem that i am just not aware of like i have the blinders on and can't see which yeah, i, I see find too. really hard to believe because i am extremely self-aware and hyper-aware or option two maybe this whole relationship love thing is just not not in the cards for me and you know what's funny too is this guy that ghosted me i remember getting kind of icked out when he started planning the future with me before we had even met so now I'm sitting here thinking, hmm, should I have trusted those little red flags that popped up? The answer is probably yes, but of course I didn't listen because I give everyone the benefit of the doubt and here I am, the one getting hurt in the end. And it's not even him that I'm upset about. Like, I really don't have any attachment towards this man. I know that might be hard to believe, but like, I'm more upset over the situation. I'm upset over the fact that these men promise you things and talk to you like they like you so, so much. And then one day they just choose to never talk to you again. Nothing makes me feel more worthless than when someone does that to me. You can't even take two seconds out of your day and treat me like a normal, decent, respectable human being. And then instead I have to sit here and pick up the pieces and create a story as to why this didn't work out. I am so exhausted and I know this isn't all men. I really try to believe that this is not all men. But like I said, I am just at a loss for words over the fact that this just happened, especially with the guy that I was just dealing with. Like, never in a million years would I have expected this to happen. It's unfortunate.
I mean, it, it does suck. You know, I feel bad for her. But she sounds a little entitled. He should let me know like a decent human being. The thing is, honey, he owes you absolutely nothing. The world does not owe you understanding. It doesn't. I hate to say it, but it doesn't. Oh, I made a decision to break up with my boyfriend of six years because he refuses to give me a ring. His explanation is that he doesn't have money right now. And I said, I don't care that you don't have money. What I care about is you wanting to make the commitment. Anyway, that is not, this video is not about this because I feel so much better, so much happier. Thank you, dopamine. Today's decision is a little bit drastically different. And honestly, I decided I want to take the role of inspiring you because my messages literally flooded. My DMs flooded with women going through the same thing, being with their mans for eight, nine years, even worse than me, and no sign of not even kids' marriage. There was talk of misery loves company, dude. Misery's like, yay! We love being miserable together. Misery loves company, bruv. Marriage and my relationship, I'm not gonna say there wasn't. But the issue is that there is excuses. And to me, that's unacceptable. I'm 28. I don't have time for that. I mean, I'm not getting any younger, honey. Not getting any younger. Neither but you decided to break up with this man. You're not getting any younger. Break up with this man that you've invested six years in. Maybe wait for him. Maybe talk him through it. Maybe go to therapy. Maybe go to couples counseling. Maybe do something to actually forward your relationship and progress things. But no, you want to cut it off and start over at 28. Are you so my challenge for you is to start taking care of yourself bitch get the fuck up let's go to the gym you know oh, sorry i'm gonna stop cussing what helped me make this decision is starting to take care of myself i took care of myself i started going to the gym i started eating good i started focusing on my job focusing on my career and guess what with that comes confidence self-empowerment which gives you the strength to do things that you don't want to do but at the end of the day, it helps you build that mentality that I'm a good person, I deserve the best, and I should not settle for a list. And you know what, baby? Ooh, it's the whole deserving thing. You don't deserve anything. Everything is earned. I was I was witter in the first half, but you don't deserve anything. You earn everything that you have. Anything worth having is worth working for. I am here for you. It was like literally, it has been one of the hardest decisions because when you don't want to leave something. There, <clears throat> your thought process is why should I like I have the choice of staying but at the end of the day you have to make the choice I, I could stay but am I going to be happy I could stay but is it going to teach him a lesson I could stay but is it going to make a difference in my life or am I going to be miserable or is it just these ladies moving around here like elementary school teachers <laughs> is it going to teach him a lesson <laughs> it's going to make things worse and I'm just going to turn 50 years old and still be in the same situation married <clears throat> actually not even married but with kids now but still, no ring. And this is not to say that my goal in life is to marry. It is not. This is to say that these are things that I value. These are things that I grew up wanting. And I still want them. And I understand sometimes there is issues. But at the end of the day, it is excuses. If it is the love of my life, I will take a fucking $20 ring. If it is the love of your life, then price doesn't matter. What matters is the thought, the wanting to make the commitment... And if there is none of that, then it is time for you to reconsider. That doesn't mean that it's forever. That just means, hey, I'm giving you the chance. See me go or do something about it. It's understandable that a man would... Uh, I don't know, man. Ladies, talk to your men. You want some beef jerky? Free. Sit. Wait. Free. Go to your place. This is where it really just boils down to communication. Why aren't you guys talking about this stuff? When you're with him year one, year two, hey, do you see us being married? Do you see us being, you know, husband and wife? Do you see us having kids? Talk about the future with your partner. Because what you'll do is you'll give up six years of your life and then be like, why aren't you marrying me? Why am I not your wife? You didn't talk about it. Me and Cass talked about this stuff early on. I was like, I'm looking for a serious relationship. I'm looking for somebody to build a family with, build a legacy with, build a dynasty with. I'm looking for somebody to grow. With me, I'm looking for somebody to be a future wife. I was just straight up blunt, honest with it. Like, we're dating, we're dating right now. It's cool. It's casual. If you if you pass the prerequisites that I want you to, and you pass the test that I want you to, cool. Then I will give you that title. But it took us years. It took me seven years to put uh, a ring on Cass's finger. 
she she never know it could have been year seven for her and she could have had a ring on her finger but she gave up six years of the best years of her life 22 to 28 that's a good chunk of time you gave it all up to a man you got all this trauma for him from him and now you're older and you're going to demand a higher price in the market oh honey no you can't do that your value's lower now so you thought the guy that you had wasn't putting you up on a pedestal enough and wasn't respecting you enough, but the next man, he's actually got to be lower than him. <laughs> next guy's going to get 12 years. You know, it's like, it's so crazy to me. You gave him the best years of your life. You gave him the best years of your life and you're not going to sit there and try to just double down on him. Like, bro, go to counseling. Go get therapy. Don't just break it off. Go to therapy. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Loki, did you have a good time? He's sleepy. Uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Go cop the ebook, The Four Pillars of Personality Makes You Irresistible to Women and Respected by Men. I'll see you guys tomorrow, man. Peace.